so now we can move on to the Linux kernel. So back to sources, extract the sources for the kernel. Okay, change into that. Now I don't think we'll need to set this lang option because um, I haven't used UTF-8, um, so I won't use it, but if obviously the lines, well, it's only a purely a visual thing, but if the lines come up, I'm gonna to attempt to use it. So what we've got to do first of all is not go um, straight into that. We've got to do make MR proper to clean any uh, detritus in there and the next thing I've got to do is to copy the config that I'm currently running now in theory um, it should exist in proc if I remember correctly because that's now part of the kernel yes I should be able to just do this and then make old config and that should just come back without asking me any questions, which it has done. And then I can carry on with the instructions here. Let's see how long this will take to compile and wait for that to build.
Right, so that has finished after six minutes, which is quite reasonable. Uh, there's no modules, but I'll run this anyway. Um, just made a monolithic kernel, just easier and more portable. So next thing I need to do is to check to see if boot is mounted. I don't think it is, so let's mount it now. And there it is. So going to copy the kernel and I'm gonna, just going to rename this similar to um, the naming conventions I've used already without overwriting anything that's already there. So this is 2.6.2do.5-lfs but this time it's 6.3 Okay, so this is actually slightly smaller than the one I compiled on the Pentium 233. And it might be code improvements because it's on a newer processor. Being this, um, this one was compiled on the Pentium 233. So maybe due to some optimizations because of the um, more advanced Pentium 4 processor. And do the same for the map. So that's going to have the same suffix. And likewise the config, although in theory this config should be identical. To the previous one. Uh, config, yeah, they are. Install some documentation. And it says to change the ownership of the Linux sources for the reasons mentioned there. So let's do that. And move, move on to making the LFS system bootable. So again, it says they're about creating a bootable floppy. But let's now go into grub and complete the installation that was missing, which caused the PC not to boot. So as before in Linux from scratch 5, the partition is the second partition. So we put a 1 in. Uh, indexed from zero, the partitions. And as you saw when I booted up manually, it's responded in the same way. And now we just overwrite the MBR of the grub with the newer code, if it is newer. Well, certainly the version of grub is newer. And you can see that's succeeded. So we mustn't copy and paste this in because it'll overwrite our existing menu.list but what we will do is edit the existing one and just add in a new entry for Linux and Scratch 6.3 so let's do oops, a copy there And this is now Linux from scratch 6.3. It's the same version of the kernel, but the suffix of the version has changed. And the partition that it's installed on is SDA9. And that should be all that we need. So I've just got one more thing to comply with FHS standards. And that is the end of it. 
So just put a marker there showing what version it is, it just makes it easier. Um, if you mount the partition, you're trying to identify what version of Linux from scratch it is. So now let's log out, unmount all these file systems. Um, right, I just remembered I should unmount the boot partition first because that's where I mounted it from. Then log out, then unmount all of these and unmount LFS. And that's all okay. And then shut down minus R. In fact, I'm going to halt it and then I'll have to switch back to the live video screen and um, then show you it booting and just do some quick checks to show that everything's all working correctly.